This television series is about creative visions and respect for humanity. Today, Schloss Furnaces is the only one of the 52 furnaces that operate in Birmingham that still exists. It's no longer operational as an iron foundry, but it is operational as a tourist attraction and as a venue where you can bring your family and understand this industry and its contributions that your family and your great-grandparents made to this city in the creation of a new way of life. In our future, we want to build a new visitor center to bring visitors to Birmingham and have them understand the importance of what we created here. It's the story of the creation of a new way of life, of a city that didn't exist, but within 30 years of its founding in 1872, was so proud of what it had accomplished that it sent this giant statue of Vulcan to the 1904 World's Fair. Think for a minute what it means for people in just 30 years to have such pride that they're willing to build that statue and send it to the entire world and then realize that not one of those people involved in its creation was born or raised in Birmingham. What you're going to be making is a mold for cast iron. In about an hour or so, we're going to pour some metal in it. They're back in the back warming the furnace up right now. the number one furnace as opposed to the number two furnace. Uh, together they were known as the city furnaces because they're the closest furnaces to the downtown area of Birmingham. Uh, these were built in the 20s, 1920s. Birmingham, Alabama shares its name with Birmingham, England because they are the two valleys on this entire planet to have all three ingredients to make iron in the same valley. This mountain over here, it's called Red Mountain. It's called Red Mountain because it has iron ore rocks in it. They're red, right? And it took coal from that direction, which is Tarrant. And that's the fuel they used to melt the iron. And they took limestone, which is one of the, the third special ingredient in making cast iron from the valley floor. All they did here is make raw material. They took dirt, essentially, earth, and refined it into what they called pig iron. Once you start a furnace like this going, I mean, it's huge. Look at it. It's, you know, three stories tall. And they would take those bars of iron and sell them to other foundries, people like myself, who melt them again and cast products. All these, these green sections you see, those are copper cooling plates that are inside the furnace. If those weren't there, it's so hot inside that furnace that it would melt the thing in half. By blowing the water up in the air, it cools it off. The air takes the heat, the water recollects, they recycle it. Trains would come in and dump materials in different bins. These are the last eight remaining vertical steam blowing engines in the world. The rest of these types of engines in this room around the world have been dismantled and destroyed. 
you're ever out here and the opportunity ever arises where you might think, well, I can climb on that, don't. Because all of the steel that's been out here has been here since the 20s. Gonna poke out the bottom, there's like a clay liner in the bottom of the furnace. Those coals, that coke, that's 3,000, roughly 3,000 degrees. I'm gonna take the opportunity to mention our summer youth apprenticeship program. Uh, every summer for two months, we have uh, what we refer to as our apprenticeship program, where we hire up to 16 of the best art students in, around Jefferson County that we can find who are interested in sculpture and or vocational thing. If you're interested in it, uh, please ask your art teacher. To make coke, uh, you take coal, you set it on fire, and you smother it. All the impurities are burned out, leaving a pure fuel. It takes roughly seven to 10 pounds of coke to melt 35 pounds of iron. In teaching young people uh, how to play this thing called jazz.
Our being able to have uh, uh, productions that, that air on, on television are a real important way of, of reaching the public. We're hoping that uh, uh, we can have more of these things around the state that, that air on a regular basis, um, that, that using this vehicle and using this arm um, to, uh, to spotlight and showcase the arts is something we support and something we really hope to see more more of in the in the months and years to come.
。私は日本から来ました、えー、三浦千恵子です、えー。折り紙は私の趣味で5年ぐらいやってます。Translation is her name is Chieko Miura. I've been learning origami for five years. I'm still a student. I have a te wonderful teacher. My friend was doing that, and then I saw, saw these things, and I, I was very moved. And, and that is,、uh, I started learning. And I, usually, I actually make it because I want to make it, and I want to、uh, give these things as a present. Present for my friends. You can make many things from one piece of paper. That is very interesting. American people who are interested in the world, they will be able to do it. American people also try. These are very interesting things.
college? Do you want to get a job? Do you have any work experience? What would you study? Are you walking in circles? When they say they will complete a job at a certain time, they will meet that timetable. Most of cultural institutions that I've been associated with, museums or historical programs of one kind or another, suffer from a lack of advertising and public relations. People don't know what we do. People don't know how to access us. It's only through forums like Art Visions that we have the opportunity to get our word out to the public so that they have an opportunity to find out what we do because we do not have, as nonprofits, the sort of advertising budgets that a for-profit tourist attraction would have. So a program like Art Vision is an important part of the community and the way in which the cultural and arts community can reach the public. And so I invite you to watch the show and learn more about Sloss Furnaces. Greater visions and the respect for humanity. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope artists can find the information useful to them. This television series it's the first TV series in Alabama for the arts, for creative visions of all artists and the arts organizations in the state of Alabama.